Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. I am here at 2018 Korea Blockchain Expo and have invited Mr. Sloan Brakefield, the CEO of Freight Network. Welcome. Yeah, great to be here. So you're taking part in Korea Blockchain Expo 2018. Yeah. First, how are you liking Korea so far and what do you think about the conference? So the conference has been great. My first time in Korea, a beautiful, beautiful country. And I'm really looking forward to exploring a lot more of the city. Mm -hmm. It's my second night here tonight. And with the conclusion of the expo this evening, I'm going to go try and explore a little bit. Any spots that you're looking into? Uh, well, being from the West, Gangnam is mm. a very popular, you've heard of it at least. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a very large neighborhood, but we'll go try and explore a couple of different places around there, maybe get some dinner. So digging into the interview, mm -hmm. the first question I have to ask you is, you're from, so Freight Network tries to implement blockchain into logistics. However, that makes me want to ask, what is the current problem with the logistics industry nowadays? Sure, Lo logistics at its root is very fragmented. Speci specifically in the US, there's, most companies are, are small. If you look at trucking particularly, 90% of the companies consist of trucks with, or uh, companies with about six trucks or less. And it's frustrating because if you need to find good services, you have to work with middlemen who've mm. managed to get a large network of these small guys together, can provide you those services. And on top of that, all of these individual companies have operated in silos. And so they don't talk very well to each other. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go from one trucking company to another, or maybe from one mode of transportation to another, like from truck to rail, those information systems don't give you the same information whenever you ask about the status of your order. Mm -hmm. And so what you're left with is, is a heavy reliance on things like paperwork or emails or phone calls because you may know a person that can give you answers, mm -hmm. but you don't know which information system can give you answers. So logistics industry deals a lot, it's really uh, voice activated. It means that uh, there's a lot of manual processes like you explained. Yeah. So do you happen to have the approximate number of the inefficiency costs caused in the uh, logistics industry? Well, I have one interesting number for you. The reliance on paperwork being so large, 20% of the cost of a global shipment can be just in managing the paperwork alone. Mm -hmm. And so if you're looking at a thousand dollar cost for a shipment that moves globally, mm -hmm. you're looking at having probably a good $200 of that just in managing the paperwork of that shipment. So the high uh, shipment fees that I receive on my uh, shipment receipts is yeah. due to the uh, aforementioned paperwork? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> logistics is a very cost specific industry. Low margins, high volume, that's how you succeed. Mm -hmm. And so finding areas of inefficiencies and really stamping that out is a big thing that we're trying to do at Freight Network. So then how can, how would blockchain technology be implemented and how could it resolve the inefficiency issues that nowadays logistics is facing? Sure. Um, so smart contracts is this really loose idea of, of being able to automate certain business processes mm -hmm. by using blockchain technology behind the scenes. And so step one is we have to get all the data into a blockchain. And the current technology, it's tough because all this public information, the idea of, of Bitcoin and these different blockchains being so public with the data, mm -hmm. a lot of logistics companies are hesitant to push the information that's necessary to automate with smart contracts mm -hmm. into the blockchain in the first place. However, once we can convince them that the value proposition is there, say you get 30% less phone calls because the information you need is now available through an API, mm -hmm. then that's something that they'll listen to. They're all about that margin, remember. And so if they can cut out certain costs in their company because blockchain technology is going to be more efficient, then we'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of adoption. So logistics deals a lot with operation system. So however, being so, data is power. Mm -hmm. And logistics is largely dominated by conglomerates. And uh, would they be willing to share, because uh, blockchain technology itself is a open source uh, technology, will, they, will the big companies who are dominating the market be willing to share their information out? Well, it's tough to say. I think evidence shows that they're at least interested. Mm -hmm. If you look at the partnership between IBM and Maersk, then you see some of the larger companies that are willing to at least explore the idea of using blockchain to help with efficiencies. Um, it's to be determined whether or not these conglomerates continue to form cartels and make people join a blockchain network that is relatively private or permissioned. Um, but I think the real value proposition is going to be in the small and medium enterprise that are mm -hmm. going to be accelerated into the use of technology because blockchain is open for everyone. And building tools around things like a protocol for logistics I think will be really powerful in getting those small guys, like I mentioned before, the, the U.S. trucking market being so mm -hmm. disjointed and fragmented, into this new age is going to be a real game changer for, for you and me when we look at the cost of goods that are 
on our backs or on our feet because it's going to be much cheaper to get them to us. So getting a bit specific, I mean, for the companies, it can, cost, it can cut costs, it can well, generate less phone calls, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. But then from the perspective of daily users, what specific services or uh, rates of discounts would they receive? Uh, it's tough to say exactly how much will go mm -hmm. down. If you look at, I like to reference the, the, the trucking crisis that we're experiencing in the US. Right now there's a good 50,000 to 100,000 truckers in demand because of the amount of volume of goods that need to move across the US today. Mm -hmm. And in that market, truckers can charge a lot more for their services. And so the per mile cost of moving goods from point A to point B in the mm -hmm. US gets to skyrocket and slowly increase. And so bringing about automation, using blockchain, using these business process automation tools that are going to come from a more efficient exchange of information, then we're going to start to see a lot of decline mm -hmm. in the overall cost of moving goods. I mean, you look at the, the difference, and we have Amazon out in the US mm -hmm. that has a really cool way of charging for shipping, right? It's, it's very upfront. You can do it for free if you're a Prime member for two day. Mm -hmm. If you have delays in your shipments, there's someone you can talk to, et cetera. So they're kind of pioneering how the new logistics experience is going to be for consumer goods. But at the end of the day, they have control over their entire network. And so when you look at the, the real power that consumers will be, the power of blockchain that's going to help the consumers, it's really in getting us all your experience across all these different companies to be similar to that of like an Amazon. Eventually, less cost for customers, right? Yeah, what, that's really what it boils down to. So uh, blockchain, it can't be detached with the concept of tokenization. So if you guys, are you guys trying to build a ecosystem based on a tokenized, the concept of tokenization? And if you guys do, how are you guys going to do it? So we have an interesting path towards a full decentralized network. What we have to acknowledge is that given the current state of blockchain technology, it doesn't quite scale right. And there's a bunch of brilliant engineers working on helping us with that problem. But in the interim, we have to acknowledge what that blockchain is going to provide. And so by starting with APIs and service layer solutions, mm -hmm. then we're going to move into a more decentralized environment where tokens are going to be very useful. Um, in the short term, though, there's great things that the tokens can be used for. For example, you mentioned before that there's a need to get data from these information systems into a pool where everybody can use it. A truck driver who is trying to provide information about their current location to you as a consumer may not be incentivized to do so today. It may be something that they feel strongly about keeping their privacy mm -hmm. in line or whatever it is, but with tokens, we now have a way of using micro incentives to encourage people to give us information. Mm -hmm. And so having a better quality of service because we can pay drivers for their data is one really good example of how this whole tokenized world is going to bring about change in logistics and adoption of this technology. Now, what about the use case, the end use case of the tokens, the aforementioned concept of tokens? So tokens are, they're just a digital asset, right? So mm -hmm. what you choose to use them for is really dependent on your creativity. Mm -hmm. And so that example before of a truck driver who may have never shared information of their location before being given a device mm -hmm. and maybe being able to pay off that device because they have it on during certain hours of operation and are getting reward tokens as a result of keeping it on mm -hmm. is, is, is a very clear cut way that we like to describe. Um, personally, so at Freight Network, we're having a token that is specifically a, a discount on our services. Mm -hmm. And so as we build out this ecosystem, uh, we are providing matchmaking tools mm -hmm. for truck drivers and shippers to basically contract directly using blockchain technology. And so we found that the cost of that can be offset through a discount token. Mm -hmm. Basically, if it's going to cost you $15 a month to use our services, then a token can then be brought in and you potentially get it for free if you stake maybe 100 tokens on your quality of service by using these tools. So in Korea, logistics is, well, you can only name a few companies, like one or two companies when it comes to logistics in Korea, which means that the, the industry itself is dominated by conglomerates. So in order for you to expand and implement and spread the word out about the benefits mm -hmm. of blockchain technology, I'm pretty sure that the marketing strategy is a crucial factor. So sure. how would you approach this matter? So I think you might be surprised by the fact that the biggest names, having a lot of volume, mm -hmm. hides the number of people behind the scenes that they work with. Most of these big companies like FedEx in the US actually mm -hmm. contract to people and don't own as many assets as you may think. Mm -hmm. And so while the brand is big, the amount of people that are 
part of that ecosystem is, is, is far greater than you could ever imagine. And so building out the, the freight brand and the freight network and the freight ecosystem in any country really just boils down to providing a better quality of service and technology and tools and resources to the small and medium enterprise so that they can offer the same things that the big conglomerates do, mm -hmm. right? So in the US particularly, uh, if you ship a package and you use FedEx, mm -hmm. then you get information about what your package is doing by typing in a tracking number. Yes, yes. Not everybody can provide that. So one of those small companies with maybe two trucks can't provide the same quality of service as mm -hmm. a FedEx because of the large IT budget that's required to provide those services. Of course. And so by having blockchain and having these generic tools and these really protocol level solutions, you're going to start to see more and more smaller guys offering better rates, same quality of service, without the need for all the extensive overhead that those large conglomerates have. So we'll see, maybe there'll be a, a revolution from the bottom that really knocks on the doors of your, your two big guys <laughs> like Hyundai or CJ here in, the, in, the, in Korea. So as a last question, I have to ask you, which market do you plan to launch your services first? Uh, we favor U.S. Mm. That's where we have most of our knowledge. My co-founder and I are U.S. born and raised. He has a shipping company in the U.S. and so we're very well aware of the problems mm -hmm. in the U.S. trucking market. Uh, but our protocol is, is global. And so anybody who wants to take what we do and basically copy and paste it into their own market, it's very easy to do so. Um, and we'll be open sourcing a lot of that stuff to make it as simple as possible. Well, so that is all the questions we have today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Sloan Brakefield, the CEO of Freight Network. Thanks for watching.